Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today, I'm really excited for this guest because he doesn't even have a shirt on this morning. Living the dream in Carlsbad, California. He's your favorite. He used to be my favorite until he started telling me about what he's doing on Facebook. Everybody from LandHub.com, Duran Frazier. Duran, what's going on, buddy? Mark, I just wanted to let you know, because you just made fun of my no shirt, I just put on a scarf. Yeah, uh, yeah so now I have a scarf on, so you feel more comfortable. Um, hello, sir. I, you know, I was thinking, because I'm such a regular on your show, are you ever going to make me a, maybe like a permanent fixture? Do I, do I get that? You are a permanent fixture. I mean, I'm kind of not really. You make it sound like I'm a guest, and it's kind of frustrating. You know, I've been you, a guest. You, I mean, I do have other guests, so I don't want it to seem like... You're just always going to be on because look, you're a busy guy. Sometimes you're not on. Well, I, guess, unless, I, I don't. I don't want the listeners to, to get all excited like I do when I email you and say, "Hey, are we going to podcast today?" And they're like, "Yeah," and then you're like, "Oh, I can't." That does happen quite often. I apologize. Um, yes, I uh, I agree. I'm, actually, I could never be a permanent fixture because I'm not always here. And uh, and when I'm at when I'm at pools or oceans, it, my cell phone doesn't work too well. So right. By the I, by the way, I, I have an Odesk campaign right now for somebody with a good voice and real estate knowledge to be my permanent podcast partner. Oh, awesome! Yeah, oh. it's it's not going real well. Yeah, no, I would would that would be a t an Odesk would be a tough one. Yeah, I bet you you have about nineteen um, offers from people in Pakistan though. I do. Bangladesh is very popular for podcasting right now. I'll bet it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, tell me a little bit about your uh, your week. You got some uh, properties out this week? All right. So, I'm looking at a deal in uh, northern Arizona, a, about an hour from Vegas. And this is an interesting deal. Uh, it's a wholesale deal. We're looking at 20 lots, 1.25 acres. Seller wants... Uh, this is the deal I've negotiated. He's got 20 lots, right? And mm -hmm. I took a look at them. Six of the lots were like going through with a wash. So I went back to him and I said, look, I can't buy those six lots. So for the bulk deal, he wants, should I even say it? Sure. <laughs> he wants 10 grand, right, for the 20 yep. lots. So that's a pretty good deal. That is a pretty good deal. Now there, now, there are some back taxes on the lots, but I'm not going to pay him until I get my money down. So I'm really only out 10 and then we're getting another 10 that we can pay off in 24 months. So I'm hold working. On, on. So it's a $20,000 or so, 10 So it's 20000 right? But only For 10 up front and then two years. So basically, you know, the risk is mitigated on, the, on okay. those. So you have two years to sell the other 10. And the lots Because, because my complaint was these take too long to sell compared to other properties I'm looking at. He's like, fine, just pay me in two years. And where are the properties at? They're uh, near Kingman, Arizona. Got it. Okay. So um, about an hour from Vegas. Okay. Got it. And and you think they're pretty good? They're pretty good properties. Well, they're they're selling right now on terms for about fourteen, fifteen. So it's fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand for one lot. For one lot. So you know we're looking at targeting preppers, and I put together a nice ad and a nice flyer, and uh, one of the people in my partnership program, um, I'm going to actually be working with him on those properties. So I'm going to put the money in and then he's going to take the other 10 lots and then we're going to split those 50-50 uh, or and Just, just let, let, let the listeners know that that obviously when you when you have a, uh, and I think, you, I mean, in terms of how the contract's structured, I'm assuming there's a there's a, uh, a, a non a non-binding, there's no deed of trust in the property, so there's nothing, but but you have an agreement in place that anytime you sell a property or deed over a property that you will obviously pay that property off, correct? Are these separate contracts per property? No, I mean, we have no agreement in place yet. I have got a lot of trust with the seller, okay. so I'm sure we'll put something in place. Okay, But, but basically, you know, it's, it's not going to be like the deal that we had where if you sell one, 
you've got to pay off a deed of trust. So there's not going to be a deed of trust on the properties. Why not do that? Why? Because it's going to kill cash flow. Well, here, here, here's why I say that because the seller, uh, the seller, if you, if you, well, if you sell a property for cash, let's say you sell it for 10 cash, um, the set, the seller is going to not, he's not going to deed you over a property. Um, because he, I'm assuming unless you have a contract in place, he's not going to give you one property of the, of the 10 or 20 properties. Is he? No, he he'll, he'll deed over when he gets his thousand dollars, whatever property that we want. Okay. So, so there is a, there, there will be an agreement that it's a thousand bucks per property. Okay. Exactly. That's, that's, that's all I was curious about because, uh, right. But two years I, to pay it. Yeah. So I'm just letting the listeners know that, that when you, when you do these deals, you, you, you in, in a contract, you want to get creative at, at times. And in this situation, because Mark's got two years to pay it off, he's trying to structure something. Um, you know, when you're, when you're going through a title company and, and you, and the property's being deeded to you and it's not a land contract, there's a deed of trust in the property. And the deed of trust basically <clears throat> keeps the person who is the, who is mortgaging the property, um, and carrying back a note it gives them obviously a, 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 an instrument that that uh, that it gives it gives them the ability to take the property back if it's not paid. So you can't technically deed the property to someone else if you haven't paid the property off. In right. this situation, in this situation with Mark, Mark's got a, a land contract in place, not and he's not going to go through a title company. Uh, I'm assuming, correct, Mark? Correct. Well, this is this is a special deal because I have so much trust with the seller. So okay. he's just going to deed over the properties to me. They're going to be in my name. Oh wow! Okay, so that's yeah. not, folks. That's not normal. That's not normal. That's <laughs> yeah. It's not normal at all. Okay, uh, that's that's. Then I won't even. I'm just trying to get the listeners to understand how that works. Well, well, let's talk about what a normal deal would look like, because yes. this 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 is a that that's Absolutely. not normal. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just think I mean a normal deal in this situation, Mark, would be, uh, you know, you go to a seller who's got 20 lots, and you would structure basically a a in, an instrument for each individual lot as you sold. Which Mark had, had expressed earlier, um, what he could do. In this case, he's not doing that. But what you would do is you would just have an agreement in place that for every property you sold, you would pay a thousand dollars, or maybe you pay because he's doing this in separate contracts. Maybe you pay an extra five hundred, so fifteen hundred dollars per lot that was sold um, that that needed to be deeded over. Correct. Correct. So th this is referred to as a takedown transaction. Which uh, at the at the seminar, I created a program, which I still need to uh, send out to everybody about, it's called the art of the takedown and a different way of taking down a bulk deal, which I promised everyone I'm going to get out and I'm still working on it, but well, it's, I, it's, I, I will. It's because you've asked me to put on my ninja outfit and <laughs> the, the, uh, the art of the takedown with my uh, ninja samurai sword and my, my uh, suit, but exactly, I can't, I can't track my samurai suit down. That's, that, that's, that's true. That's true. So what's going on with you? Um, just, just busy working on some different ad campaigns, uh, pushing pretty hard. I've got a lot of, uh, good stuff happening on, on the land side. I, I, as most, most listeners know, over the last year and a half or two years of podcasting, I haven't been super focused on getting rid of my land, uh, just because there's properties I, I, I really, it's funny because Mark and I are different, but I, there's, there's properties I like to keep and I'll just pay the property tax and, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm in everything I own free and clear. Um, so I, there's no, you know, real push for me on some properties, but, but I've made a little push to get rid of stuff because I do have a, you know, I do have probably around, you know, anywhere between 75 and a hundred properties at any given time. Um, and so for, for, for me, it's kind of silly to keep paying property tax on some of the stuff and I'm never going to be able to visit and hang out on all 75 properties. Um, and I'm always moving stuff, but now it's, now it's time to kind of make a little push. And, and so I'm out there doing some different campaigns and, and like we've discussed in the past, it's always about being creative and thinking outside the box, and, right. that's what, right, and that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so let's talk about those different campaigns because what's interesting is that you were looking at three platforms to sell on, right? Twitter, <laughs> LinkedIn, and Facebook. Yeah. And now you have three definitive opinions about each platform. Can we, can we break down what you think of each one? Um, I mean, I'm not going I'm, I'm to give a, a, an opinion – that I to put it this way, I haven't done enough research to give you a definitive um, conversion aspect of which one works best. But right. uh, I will say that LinkedIn's just been LinkedIn has never worked at all. Well, now, why, now, why is that? Do you think Be, because LinkedIn doesn't do um, doesn't do what Facebook does or what Twitter does? Um, Link, LinkedIn has has little ad box at the bottom. Basically, to me, LinkedIn was like what what Facebook used to be. If you guys remember the ads on the side of the page that just never converted well, um, right. 
it, and they still don't convert well, and yet they're still there, which is funny. Um, you know, it, maybe it's more of a branding play than anything else, but those boxes have never been successful for me. Um, the ones that the ones that do well are the sponsored are the sponsored ones that end up in, in the middle of your page um, while you're while you're scrolling through and looking at uh, you know your friends and your pictures and and uh, so that's right so, right. so they're in your news feed in Facebook. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah, those work. People Correct. see those. So and 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 when it comes to that, there's so much more, and you know, Mark's been through it, I've been through it. You the con converting converting those and and getting eyeballs. I mean, if if you get if you if you have a big campaign, you're spending a lot of money, you're going to get people clicking on it. Um, but you want quality, not quantity. Uh, so you really want to really hone in on on what is your call to action, what is what is your what is your picture showing um, your customer. So and that's right, right. And you you think the picture is more important than the copy. In Facebook, correct? Correct. I, I mean, that's the first thing that people see, um, and you can. And so, for me, I, I believe that you've really got to challenge yourself to find, um, you know, what it what is the best picture. What what am I going? Because you can a picture, you know, tells a thousand words. I mean, if you can if you can create a collage of images that tell the story without even having them read the copy, um, right. that's huge. Yeah, but, yeah, but pick, okay. So when you're actually creating the ad in Facebook, the picture has to be. A certain size. Okay. Right? Correct. So, I mean, do you, do you farm that out? Do you find your own pictures? I mean, it's hard to find a good picture. Um, no, you can. There, Isn't it? That's going to no. tell a thousand words within land? I mean, do you, do you show a picture of land? Do you show a picture yeah. of a person? No. You Okay. First off, on, a, on, a, on, a, um, on, a, on an image, you can actually write on an image, right? Right. You can, you can write text on an image. You can you can take half the image and take another image and put it right next to it, um, and I'm not talking about in Facebook. You have a graphic designer to this. I I've been blessed to be married to a very talented graphic designer, right? Um, who baffles me every day. She's I mean she's unbelievably talented. She has no clue how talented she is, and um, so we you know we sit down and if I ask her something, she'll create something really neat. But but I'll give her the idea, um, you know, and uh, and she'll and direction and she'll make it happen. So. That's 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 those are things that she can save in a PNG file, um, in a JPEG file, and then I can upload that image to Facebook. Does Facebook want a face a JPEG file? Sure. Or a PNG doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They don't care. Yeah. No PNG. no PDF file though. No no not a PDF. You can't even PDF's not an image. I mean not an image file. That's not an image file, uh, right? So so there's TIFF. There's GIF. yeah TIFF won't work either. TIFF is a high res resolution file. Okay. Uh, you just want to stick to a PNG or a or a JPEG, um, and and going back to it, you can create collage. Like you know, I was telling Mark. I mean, you know, tell the story. Like if you're selling, you know, um, if you're selling something niche, why why that property? You know, maybe you take a, an image of a solar panel and put it on the land and say, this could be you. Whatever, you know, right. Like, um, you know, you know, a, a then and now picture, like what, what, what the probably looks like, you know, what it probably looks like now, what it probably could look like in five years from now. Right. Uh, right. You know? Yeah. I mean, it'd be cool to see like, you know, the raw land and then like a tiny house. Exactly. And that, and those like can, be, I mean, those can be altered and manipulated so quickly on, uh, you know, and you're not lying. You're just saying that the, the whole, the whole idea of marketing is, is painting a picture to somebody to sell a product. And in this case, this is what, this is what your land could be. Um, so it, I just think that when people are, are out there looking to create, and this doesn't just work for land folks. I mean, I'm sure, I, you know, it works, I, for, yeah, it works for anything. Yeah. I right. mean, and I, and I, you know, funny enough, again, you know, the, marketing is sort of my, you know, I think right in my wheelhouse of what I do and what I do best. And so I've been, you know, I've, I've, I've been taking on some of these campaigns just on the side because they're not hard um, to structure. It's just, you have to be creative uh, and then going in and sort of managing the campaign. So, Right. Um, right. So, and, and, and I'm actually going to be working with Duran to do this yeah. for myself because I don't have time to to do it. Yeah. So I'm a big believer in hiring someone better than yourself. Right. And having Correct. that self-discipline because, yeah, it'd be cheaper for me to do it myself. But if I'm if I'm doing that, then I'm not working on other aspects of the business that are going to grow the business. Growth completely stalls. When I'm making an ad in Facebook, correct. Now, now the difference between Mark and I is growth doesn't stall for me because it 
for me, the, the, the understanding of, of what I'm trying to create doesn't take me all day. In fact, I farm out what I, what I don't want to handle and I just take on what I do because I can manage these campaigns um, in a time effective manner that allows me to get other stuff done and continue to grow my business. Which is great, which is ideal. So, and you have, I mean, Mark, Mark has qualities that I don't have um, that, that help, allow him to grow a business that I wouldn't touch, that I would farm out myself. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I can't farm out to Mark because he's so busy. <laughs> but I, I'd, I'd make an exception for you. Thanks, buddy. You know appreciate I would. It. Yeah. I appreciate it. So, all right. So let's talk about, you don't like LinkedIn, but just right now, you've just, just a sample advertising that you've done on there. You don't think anyone sees those ads or demographically LinkedIn's not the real audience for what we're doing. Is that correct? Uh, you know what? The jury's still out. You don't know. The jury's still out because here's the thing is, is, and then people all have to understand this. These, these platforms are evolving, not even daily anymore. It's like hourly. Hourly. You know, these platforms are evolving so fast that you really do. I mean, you know, you, you have, you have to understand and know and be involved. Like, you know, I have, I have a friend, I have several friends who aren't on Facebook as you do as well, Mark. And I really, I really, understand their perspective their perspective is i don't want to have my ex-girlfriends contact me and i tell my friends dude you're almost 40 you don't look as good as you used to when you were 21 don't worry about it right. uh, then i have my then i have my other friends who just are like yeah you know they're they're against the grain you know like i, I don't need facebook you know i've got my real friends so, but for me it's funny because it's not like I, I you know i like i i'm a social guy i like keeping in contact with my friends but at the same time this is this is where everyone is, right? There's so, a billion people on Facebook. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna show up to the party, you got to know what the party's for, right? Right. And and I think the dilemma is is that is that you got people in the real world who are, are you know a lot of a lot of business guys. You know, I mean the, the people that are you know 35, 37 and younger. Um, like my age demographics was like the, I think that like the the peak age. Like right now, I'm 36. The guy, a couple guy, couple years ahead of me, aren't big on Facebook. Everyone under me, you know, age wise, everyone uses it, understands it, knows it. Okay, right. Uh, and so the, the the interesting dynamic is like, you know, you, you you get these people that go, "Gosh, I don't get it, but I I wanna I wanna get on there." So like they'll get on Facebook, go, "Hey, I'm trying to learn it." I'm like, "Gosh, you haven't been involved with Facebook and you don't understand it. So how are you going to learn it in three weeks? You don't know what these news feeds do now, what they did three months ago." And six months ago, and how this whole entire advertising component has changed. Right. So you really do have to understand it, have to immerse yourself in it to understand, it, and you and to just go throw up a campaign and see if it converts. Generally, it's it's smarter to have someone handle it um, in a cost effective manner to go and take your campaign. So right. So so uh, when someone handles it, like what exactly are they doing? Are they trying to get the cost down per click? Are they trying to they're trying to do that, and they're trying to increase your conversions? Correct. And, 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 and Facebook is now, I mean, over the last, you know, I don't even know how, I think it's been six months or a year, um, you, you are giving you um, the ability to, to see what pictures convert best. So, so as, you, as you convert uh, or as you, um, as you advertise, you, you have uh, five picture sets and, you can, and images and you can see which, which converts best. So I you see. can sort of A-B test on your own. They'll help you A-B test. Um, because they're gonna they're gonna kind of rotate and they're gonna and they're gonna post which one converts the best. So it's really interesting um, how this works. But um, as this platform evolves, I, I mean, to me right now, Facebook is um, your primary platform to advertise. And I think everyone knows that, right? right? Because that's that's where everyone we, is. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting that we're talking about Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. We haven't mentioned in twenty something minutes Google. That is unbelievable to me. Well, because because uh, three months ago we're not even talking about that. We're talking about Google and AdWords and AdSense. Well, here's here's why, Mark, and it's not that we didn't think Facebook was an option, but I think that the dynamic is is that is that if if you're able to take a specific property, like if you told me, um, like like if you told me you had a property in Kingman that you could sell for fifteen grand. If you found a specific niche, like let's say that you knew people in Flagstaff, Arizona, went to Kingman on the weekends, okay, right. and they were all preppers, and they, all they did is they brought food from their local cannery 
to uh, their place in Kingman, and maybe you maybe you create this. Uh, right. right. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. And and so you're targeting a specific group of people, um, and not just people in Flagstaff. People in Flagstaff that that are preppers. Or that right. like the prep, or that like the prepper show, or and, that, and I can prepper. drill down to those people in Facebook. Correct. Not in Google. Correct. And and that's where you can really, really find a high converting um, source. And so that's where I've sort of you know come in, looked at creatively how how to target specific demographics and specific markets. And that's really, I mean, it's not easy to do. Um, but when you do that and when you can find out what converts the best, and, and again, just so, just so everybody knows, I'm not saying that everybody needs to go learn Facebook advertising. In fact, um, you know, I'm creating a little something for people like Mark and other people to come bring because me and my team are, are able to do this. So if, if you guys want this, you know, contact Mark and then Mark can contact me and I'll put you in touch with, um, the right people to get you involved in the program, but but the idea is to 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 really figure out what is your niche if you're buying a piece of property somewhere, um, you know. And it, you know, it's so funny because again, it goes it, it's it's not just land; it's everything. I mean, we've got lots of listeners that are that are doing stuff that are, are probably already entrepreneurs that have a product right. and that want to sell a product. They don't understand how to market, but Facebook is 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 has an ability. The difference between Google and Facebook is you have an image, and right. an image that goes in the news feed that people can see and if, if that's the, a very good image and you've got some money to spend and see what converts um, it's the potential is is very um, is very large so All right, right, Duran, let me ask you this now is Facebook good for leads or is it good for sales or is it good for both it's giving it, it, gosh it's good for just about anything now I mean they're really they're really I mean that that platform in the last six months is just it's uh, it's very very interesting how how large it's grown and how they're focusing on specific demographic. It, you can it could be used for events, it could be used for leads, right. it could be used to, to to straight convert or track conversions. So they're giving you multiple tools on how to how to do that. Okay, when I was reading somewhere that Facebook was changing their algorithm in the sense that some people's news feeds weren't going to show up. Like you couldn't game the system. Like some people were paying like nothing per click, and now they're paying a lot more per click to be seen. Something like that. Have you have you heard anything about that? Facebook. Okay, so I, I know a lot about Facebook's algorithm. Um, face, I, I, Mark, I think we've talked about this before, but but if you post something in Facebook, there's an interesting video I watched. Um, if you post something in Facebook, uh, you know I'm 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 cutting onions. Okay. Okay. Um, and and you put a picture of an onion that you're cutting an onion, and and you and you and you're wondering why. There was one like on your post in two days, but you had 600 friends on your Facebook page, right? You're like, well, gosh, I'm cutting onions. I thought people liked me. Right. Um, how Facebook works now is your post is shown based on the virality of the post, meaning if if six people saw it and four people clicked it, it's going to send it to more people in your in uh, of of your friends on their newsfeed. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So the algorithm is the more vi the more viral your um, picture or your post is, or the more value it has. Can you can you do video, Duran? What's that? Can you add a video on there instead of a picture, or no? Of course. Oh, okay, that could go viral. But not your videos, Mark. Yours. No, no, you. not my videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one wants to see me with a cup of coffee. Yeah, that's funny. Yes, yeah. no. That, uh, that's how you lose friends. Yes, exactly. Um, no, you you can um, you can do video uh, again. It's. You know what? What goes viral? I mean, images go viral, right? Like the stories of images go viral, and no one knows why certain things do go viral. Um, but but on the other on the other hand, we know why certain things go viral. So um, by by creating something like for for me, I'm not posting to I don't post and care what I post that goes you know to my friends and seen, right? Like I'll have some posts that I get you know one like, and I'll have some posts that have. 150 likes. It's bizarre, right. but that's just that's just the way it is. Um, and that 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 is these, how, these are social posts. These are business posts. These are business posts. Correct. Right. These are within my friends, and I don't post anything political. I don't post. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a joke. so just so you all know. I had I have a lot of uh, my Facebook friends that love when I used to post political stuff because I would we would have I would have a banter of about 90 comments. With people all and all, you know, different aspects, uh, 
uh, politically. And so I, so right. I remember I would, I, and I'd always have the last word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, what's funny about that is that the, at the seminar, and I didn't even think about this, we had Wayne Allen Root yeah. as the guest speaker. Now he did, he didn't speak anything politically at all. Didn't say one word about his politics, but in his video, he was talking about. He ran for being, president, right? What's that? He ran, yeah, he ran for the 2008 libertarian vice president and he wrote a book about, uh, you know, surviving Obama. Obama get in, right? Now, half my group right away was turned off by this guy. Couldn't hear a word he said, even though he's only talking about branding. Oh, he did talk. So, he did, so the, he did the lesson learned. What's that? He did bring it up? No, he never. No, he brought up branding. He never brought up his politics, but yeah. he's known for being anti Obama. So if you're an Obama supporter in the room, right away, you're like, this guy's terrible. Yeah. Even, even though he was a great speaker. So, yeah. I, you know, lesson learned is politics and business don't really mix. They don't. Which yeah. Is why. I, yeah. I lost a customer based on one speaker. Oh, you did? Yeah. The guy was, he was upset. He's like, I can't believe you had this guy speak. Okay. So give him, uh, give, give him back, uh, give, give, give the customer's email address to me and I'll, 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 I'll take yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'll be an interesting conversation. So anyways, you know, going, going back to politics, I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I, for me, like, I don't even, I don't talk politics at all, any, anymore at all, but, um, because I think we've all come to the conclusion that, uh, all our politicians are pretty corrupt. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you'd be hard pressed to be like, I love my politicians. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're doing such a great job. Yeah. They don't really tell me, don't, represent me. Please don't ever tell me your party's better than the other one. Cause they're not. Um, I, I, look, I, I'm, I'm apolitical. Honestly, I don't like any of them. I, 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 I can't even tell the difference between the two parties anymore. You've got your two extremes on each side. If I had to poll the majority of Americans, I'd say most Americans are fiscally conservative and socially liberal. For the most part, you're not, yeah. but most yeah. people are. I think that's if, that, if you had to poll people, yeah. most everyone's in the middle. Yeah. Do you say I'm not? You're not. Dude, come on. You, you, you know. Whatever. We're not going to talk about. It. Anyways, okay. look, we're, 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 we got another, okay. Look, we're, we're we're running out of time here. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do another podcast. I want to continue the conversation about Facebook because I think it's important. But all right, I'm gonna put you on the spot as I always do. Oh, what? Come on, come on, man. What's your tip of the week? My tip of the week. Oh man, you know, there's a website which I'm sure I've already brought up before. It's but it's got a wealth of real estate knowledge, and um. And there's there's agents, brokers, people just talk. It's just real estate professionals around the world. And the website's called ActiveRain.com. We talked about that before. No, let me check it out. Active I don't, Rain, I don't, I don't think so. We've which is so now owned these. by Trulia. Um, but it's basically. Oh, I did read about Trulia buying these guys. Maybe we did talk about Active Rain. If, if we did, it was about a year ago or a year and a half ago. But it's just a, it's just a wealth of knowledge for for uh, for people. Um, I you know I. I, you'll you'll write in uh, you know a you know you'll type in something on Google asking a question and 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 if it's about real estate this this uh, company you know this website might p come up. Are, so, these, are these guys competing with bigger pockets? Ah uh, yes, yeah, sort of, sort of. Um, I wouldn't say it's it's a little bit different niche. Like I think um, uh, bigger pockets is, is more the creative niche of of real estate investing, and this is more of just uh, you know residential uh, a lot a lot more residential focus than than bigger pockets would be. Right. Okay. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Oh, all right. I like it. All right. All right. My tip of the week is it just came up, by the way, because I was working with my team and I, one of the guys on my team, Brian, is like an Excel ninja, right? He's amazing with Excel. And so when we're doing all our flow charts, he does everything in Excel and other members of the team don't necessarily think in spreadsheets, right? So we were introduced to this program called Gliffy, G-L-I-F-F-Y.com. Diagrams made easy. Create professional quality flow charts, org charts, UML diagrams, network diagrams, wireframes, technical drawings, and more. And Gliffy works directly in your browser. Um, you know, I like to use mind maps a lot when I'm working with clients. Um, but this is pretty interesting, and I do believe that uh, it's free to start. So check out Gliffy.com if you're working with your team or your 
or whoever you're, whoever you're working with, you're making an org chart. You, you, you even have an idea, and you just want to see it visually. Gliffy is pretty cool. So, Duran, let's uh, let's do another podcast. Okay. For, uh, for next week, we'll, and we're, we're going to continue our conversation on Facebook. Uh, any last comments before we close for today? Yeah, if uh, we haven't discussed it, we'll probably open up the next podcast with it with the, with the statement. But um, we finally uh, to to Mark's clients, um, we have a special coupon code for LandHub.com. So uh, that's that's ready. They're they're personalized, so you need to you need to email Mark and get that uh, get that from him. Um, he'll have a list of coupon codes for each customer. Um, so I just want to let you guys know that. Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, you won't get the coupon code unless you leave a review on iTunes. Perfect. Yeah, I'm I'm hijacking it. Yeah, that's, I like that. That's how I roll. Yeah, we, we, have, we need we have, feedback, people. Yeah, how we, are have 12, we, doing? We, have, we know we know how many people listen because we can see, and we know there's hundreds of listeners. And Mark and I don't get paid for this. I mean, well, Mark does. I don't. Um, and so the, dif- <laughs> the, the difference is is that you know, for me at least, you know, a little feedback or a little love to show that you're that I'm somewhat appreciated. You got I'm, so much love in Vegas. Yeah, man, are you needy? Yes. What? No, Look, I am needy. I am, folks. All right. I I'm, I'm more needy than Duran is. We, we got to get some reviews up on iTunes. It really helps us. If you like the, if you like the podcast, please support us and, and leave a positive review. We'd really appreciate it. And if you don't like the podcast, give us, shoot us an email. Let us know what you'd like to hear. Um, I did get a review this week. We'll talk about it um, as well because uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. But anyways, uh, if you want more tips, tricks, techniques, please go to www.thelandgeek.com, download the Passive Income Blueprint, get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and of course, get this podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. Give Duran some love. Buy some wholesale land from him, reserveland.com, and certainly start checking out landhub.com. Email me for your coupon code to start getting your listings out everywhere, everywhere. So it really saves time, and ultimately, time is money. So, Duran, thanks again. Thank and you. I want to thank all the listeners for spending your valuable time with us, and we'll see everybody next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.